Hi, I'm Shade Frey with TaxSellSupport.com. I'm here with uh, my business partner, Stephen Swenson, and this is the Questions from the Tube series that we're doing uh, on for uh, here for the month of March. Every month, we're, uh, we're trying to do a new video uh, with questions that we answer from uh, some of our different viewers online. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Most of the people find us uh, online through watching our YouTube videos, and so we get all kinds of different questions on there. Uh, we try to, to answer all of those questions, and we get lots of great comments as well. Yeah, yeah. in fact, yeah, a lot of comments we see here, um, and we always, it, 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 we love to get the com, you know, the compliments and the comments. We know a lot of you probably don't think that we even read it, or maybe it doesn't matter, but it does matter to us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We go through and read all of them. We try to respond to the comments as well and the questions that you guys have. But in this particular series, we want to kind of address some of those questions, uh, you know, in, in a video series. And also, if you do have questions, go ahead and ask them, uh, you know, within the, within the question or within the, the comment section. And, and we'll try to, you know, we might address one of your questions in one of our upcoming videos. Yeah, absolutely. So here is uh, the first question we have. It says, uh, so hi, guys. I have a question. So if you buy a residential lot in a different state, but you can't reach um, over there, then who is going to cut the grass if somebody throws the garbage in your lot or something uh, that's against the, the county law? Then the county will give you a penalty or the neighbor will claim uh, on the lot or something. Just figuring out how does it work. Yeah, you know, this question it comes up occasionally. When, when we are buying a tax deed lot or any type of land, once we purchase that property, we are now responsible for that land. So... If, uh, if it does need to have the grass cut, if we bought a property like that that that's, uh, you know, needs to have it cut, then we're probably going to need to send somebody out there once a year to get it cut. Yeah, it's actually one of the things that we take into account when we're looking at properties is uh, what kind of ongoing expenses will there be with this property. And for instance, if we are dealing with a piece of property that has grass, we know that somebody is going to have to be cutting that grass. Um, you know, uh, even if it's uh, if it's weeds, you know that could also be the case. You know, where it's going to need to get knocked down. The only uh, uh, the only place where that's really not that that is if we can find something that's naturally landscaped. Uh, you know, which in that case, hopefully, it's just kind of the way it naturally is, and you're not going to have to do anything. You know, to uh, to change it. Yeah. Well, and and this can also really you know be dependent on the city that the property is located in. Some cities are very stringent and they're sending people out there all the time and you know in in putting liens on properties where other cities you know unless it's a serious problem then they're probably not going to address it but if we do own land that is something that we're going to be aware of and you know if there is something any type of problem we're going to really need to be uh we're going to be responsible for it yeah now um also though just something to keep in mind is um you know, this may be more of an issue, I guess, if you're if you're planning on doing like a long term um, buy and hold strategy with properties, or if you're um, offering seller financing or something that's going to end up keeping them in your name for a long time, um, then uh, you know, then it may be something you'll need to, uh, to to worry about more. But with a lot of these properties, we're looking to try to buy and and unload these things, you know, within um, you know within a short time. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, hopefully there won't be, you know, I mean, within six months, you shouldn't have too many issues. Well, and one question is, there is there a, any way the neighbor can claim the lot? And the only way the neighbor could claim the lot is if you're not paying their property taxes and they buy it at the tax sale. So they can't claim your lot just because they're mowing the or grass. Just because you're not there. Yeah, or just because you're not there. But if there is some type of problem, then we're going to be responsible for it and we're going to take care of it. If you know, if it's not naturally landscaped, and a lot of building lots are just kind of the way that they are, meaning when we talk about naturally landscaped, it means that nobody's gone in there and plowed anything out. It's just kind of the way it's always been since that lot's been built. In that kind of scenario, you know, we might not need to send somebody out. But if it does look like it has been cut, then we'll send somebody out maybe once a year just to make sure it's trimmed. Yeah. Well, and also, you know, if the uh, if the county's about to charge you for something, they're going to mail you out notices about it. Yeah, the, and the city will. That's probably where you'll get it as well. Yeah, so let's see. I move on to question number two here. Um, it says, hi, very informative videos indeed. I have a question. Is 
Foreclosure sales online on Florida county websites, the same thing as tax liens. You know, and this is really a, a great question. When it comes to Florida tax sales, Florida is a little bit different than, than any other state because they actually have three types of online sales. Yeah, they are a little bit confusing in that way. And, um, and you know, uh, at the same time, uh, you know, they use a lot of the same terminology, so it can be confusing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there is tax lien auctions. And so there's online websites that are completely dedicated to the tax lien sale. Yeah, this is a sale that happens once a year mm -hmm. for the back taxes that are owed. Yep, yeah, in May and June. And so there's probably, you know, almost a good majority of the counties, uh, you know, at least 80% of them have online tax lien auctions. So you're going to see a lot of those tax lien online websites available online, whether they're by done through real auction whether they're done by bid for uh, by Grant Street Group or uh, Florida Tax Sales, they're going to be similar. Where each county has its own uh, auction website. Yeah. Now, uh, what happens after that is where Florida is different and kind of where it changes. So most of the states in the country use just one system. So if it's a tax lien system, that's you know what they uh, what they have, and at the end of that uh, redemption period, the lien holders can pursue foreclosure, but in Florida, what they do is a little bit different. Tax liens are sold with a two-year redemption period, uh, but when that redemption period comes to an end, uh, rather than um, than uh, the lien holder needing to kind of go through the foreclosure process, you basically just fill out a form with the county, and what they're going to do is they're going to schedule that property for a tax deed auction. Yeah, exactly. And so they'll go ahead and foreclose on it, send it to the tax deed sale. Now, when it comes to the tax deed online auctions or foreclosure auctions, there's actually two types of foreclosure auctions in Florida. And this is, can make it a little bit confusing because some of the auction websites will sell both mortgage foreclosures and tax deed foreclosures on the same website. Yeah, you know, um, foreclosure is a term that gets used a lot of times to describe uh, you know any of these properties that are basically taken, but a bank foreclosure is really quite a bit different from uh, you know from a, a, a tax foreclosure. Uh, you know the, the, when the bank forecloses on a property, they can do that pretty quickly, uh, and uh, and uh, they do that because of the contracts you know that you sign. Uh, you know when it comes to tax deed foreclosures, it's a little bit different process here where the uh, the county is going according to state law. And, uh, and, you know, they are foreclosing on the property owner's rights and then selling it off, starting out with, with what's owed. Um, so they're both foreclosures in a way, um, but, you know, with the, uh, the bank foreclosure, it's kind of always been in the bank's name in a way. Whereas with the, uh, the, the tax foreclosure, that's a true foreclosure. Yeah. And when it comes to the online foreclosure auctions, some counties will have their own website for their tax deed auctions and their mortgage foreclosure auctions. And some counties will have them both on the same website. They'll just be different days. So, you know, maybe on Tuesday they have their mortgage foreclosure auctions and on Thursday they have their tax deed auctions. Yeah. And in other words, sometimes we'll be looking at auction calendars for some of these counties and we'll see this on certain dates they have sales where they're offering FCs, which are standard like bank foreclosures, and then other days where they might be offering TDs, which are tax deeds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so question number three here um, says, uh, thank you. I've been undergoing my diligence in studying uh, land lots. How long after acquiring the lot would one be able to take the parcel to a community bank to exact a HELOC? A real estate attorney informed me a minimum of two years. I felt this was disinformation, so I figured I'd ask the professionals. Yeah, and you know, there's a second question that kind of goes along with it as well, where it says it seems like buying is, is fairly straightforward once you have the basic criteria down. I'm curious how you're actually selling the land once you've bought it and gone through the quiet title action so you can actually sell it retail. Are you simply using a broker or realtor, or are you doing your own marketing? Yeah. So these are um, both a couple of um, of good questions. So th the first question here, though, is basically, you know, how long after acquiring the property, you know, could you take it to a community bank to basically get a loan on it? And the, the um, at the at the root of this of this question is really what we're talking about here is the property deed. Okay. And um, when it comes to property deeds, you know, counties. Um, you know, when counties are going to provide deeds, they have deeds that are warranted, uh, you know, in other words, deeds that are guaranteed, and then deeds that are not 
guaranteed. And a tax deed is a type of unguaranteed, uh, it's a type of unguaranteed uh, deed. But the reason why that's an issue for us is because it's not eligible for title insurance. And so that's going to be an issue if we're trying to, uh, to get a loan against the property or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not positive you can actually get a HELOC on land. I believe that's mostly for homes. But even getting any type of financing, uh, or at least any type of traditional bank financing, they're usually going to want, like Shade said, a type of warranty deed. So we're going to need to go through that quiet title process unless we're selling it as is wholesale. So if you're selling that as is wholesale, then you know you, you, you could go ahead and do that. But if you're actually looking to get a loan on the property or borrow against the property, then you're either going to go through quiet title process or you're going to hold on to the property long enough within that state where it becomes easy to get a warranty deed. For example, in Florida, after you've owned a property for four years, uh, after you've purchased it from four years from the tax sale, then it's very easy to get a warranty deed because you've owned it for the last four years and, and they can see that you've lived within the property. Well, and this is probably what the real estate attorney you know, was trying to, to tell you or what he meant when he said the minimum of two years because that's not exactly true in terms of... Uh, 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 it's not as if you would have to wait out that time period no, no matter what, um, but, but what it probably does mean, and I'm not sure if that's a correct time period or not, but like Steve was saying, after you pay you know, property taxes for a set period of time, what you're doing is establishing your unchallenged ownership of that property. And uh, after a certain number of years, most states will make it very easy for you to get that warranty deed after a certain number of years. Have, um, have passed, but let's say that we don't want to wait out that time, we want to get it faster. Well, we can do that much faster if we pursue a quiet title action. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the second question, you know, kind of goes through that process. So, I've, okay, I've went ahead and purchased the piece of land. Now I've gone through quiet title action. How do I actually sell it for retail value? Am I using a real estate agent or I'm doing it on my own? And, and that's really going to come down to the property. You know, on, on many pieces of land, and if you know how to be able to do that, and hopefully by this point, just doing the real estate and the tax sale investing, you will know how to do that. You can just go ahead and market it on your own and maybe even discount the price a little bit what you would pay out in commissions to help, you know, motivate motivate other buyers to, to do offers. On oh, the yeah, property. but the thing is, is if we take a property through quiet title, then we can sell it any way we want, and selling it is not going to be a problem because... We can offer discounts on pricing if we want because we didn't pay very much for it. So offering something like a, a 5 or 10% discount is something that's feasible to us, but to most property owners, that would be enough to make them you know, just about yeah. drop dead. Well, and the fact that we've purchased it for less and we've got it more profitability within it, that's where we can also hire a realtor, have them do all the marketing for us, take out the 6% or whatever, and not have to deal with any of... The, the negotiation, the contracts, the phone calls, anything like that. And so that's kind of, you know, it's really going to depend on the property. If we're talking about, a, a, you know, here we're talking about land. But if we were talking about a structured property, well, you know, an agent may be the very best option you have because you're going to need somebody to show the property to potential buyers. With a piece of land, you can have anyone drive past and take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, the more valuable the property is, the more uh, it's going to make sense to take it through quiet title and to sell it for full market price. Um, you know, if if the value is under twenty thousand, if it's under ten thousand, uh, you know, then it's probably not going to make sense to go through that process because uh, when you go through the quiet title action, that's something you have to hire a real estate attorney to do. And essentially, what they're doing is bringing a lawsuit up before the court. You know, they are you know. Uh, Quiet title is really about uh, is about silencing any any kind of challenges or claims to uh, to your property. You know that you're able to establish unchallenged ownership of it, and to do that, you have to go through the courts. And so, uh, you know, it's something that we would hire an attorney to do, but it's not going to take two years. We could probably get through the process uh, in anywhere from uh, you know a, a few months to uh, to longer if there's additional issues. You know, I mean, it could take six months or eight months or who knows how long, it, depending on how complicated the ownership history is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, once you've gone through that process, really the, you know, the options are completely up to you. Yeah, you can sell it for full market value. I mean, you can sell it because it has a warranty deed. 
but you've not paid nearly what everybody else has paid for the same. Yeah, so you have the flexibility in hiring an agent or if you want to save a little money doing it on yourself, if you want to try to sell a little quicker, discounting the price a little. Yeah, price is basically our biggest weapon or tool when it comes to selling. We can always reduce or offer at a lower price than our competition because we're paying very little for these. Yeah, especially if we're looking to sell it quickly and get a, you know a quick turnaround. Yeah. If we're willing to wait a little longer, then we can you know have a little bit higher price. But if we'd like to sell it quick and take that money to reinvest in a new opportunity, then you know dropping the price a little is going to do way more than any type of fancy marketing well, or advertising. In fact, a lot of times when we're looking at comps, when we're trying to determine what you know what to buy. Uh, you, what the comps are really telling us there is, uh, you know, about what kind of a selling price you know we think we can get out of the property uh, at, at wholesale prices. You know, how much we think we can blow it out for quickly. We might look and see what's the cheapest property in this area, um, so that we can offer something that is far more compelling. Yeah, absolutely. Here are uh, just some different uh, properties that uh, some of our coaching students and also our members uh, members have. Uh, have purchased recently and we also have somebody who left us a note there on on uh, on YouTube as well saying I I almost watched all of your guys's videos and and so much valuable information in this space I have you guys I have your guys' subscription and will probably pay that price this is life-changing no well, we love hearing that kind of stuff and really what's even more impressive is that is that you know our members our coaching students are really buying and selling this stuff and they're making money yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, whether you're starting on the regular membership or you're working with with uh, with the coaching program, there's you know many different properties within there where students are picking up both tax liens and tax deeds and having success. Yeah. Now, if uh, you would like some training or become part of our membership program, uh, which is easily the most bang for the buck when it comes to uh, training and support, you can do that for just thirty nine dollars a month, uh, and you can do that by basically going to taxsalesupport.com into the membership section, but we have a lot of stuff that, that includes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you guys are going to have access to all of our auction list or over the counter list, uh, literally hundreds of hours worth of recorded trainings, many trainings that we don't have here on YouTube that is just for our membership. Yeah, as well as live trainings that we do every single week too. Yeah, absolutely. So be sure to subscribe and, and give us the like button. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.